Hola, bienvenidos al episodio número 33 del Crochet Cakes Podcast. 33 already. Sí, y como es usual, estamos grabando un domingo a las 9 y media de la mañana, o las 9 de la mañana, y hoy es el 17 de septiembre del 2017, y estamos grabando de nuestra casa en Puerto Rico. Yes, as usual, we're coming to you from the western side of Puerto Rico, where we live. We are recording in our home, and we are thanking you for joining us once again this wonderful Sunday morning, September the 17th. Thank you for joining us. Right, so we have a lot of stuff to cover in this episode. We've got plenty of finished objects, a couple of works in progress, some sewing, some knitting, which hasn't happened in a while, some crochet as usual. Uh, but before we get into all that, in case there are any new viewers out there, welcome. And for all the returning viewers, thank you for coming back. My name is Clarisabeth, and you can find me anywhere on the internet as Crochet Cakes. And I am Caroline, Clarissa's mom, and I am on Ravelry as capital I, capital P, Inspired Professor, and on Instagram as inspired underscore professor. All in lower caps. Everything in lower caps, right. So, let's get cracking. But before we get into any of the crafty crochet sewing knitting goodness, I do want to give a huge, huge shout out and a huge thank you to anybody and everybody who kept messaging us during the Hurricane Irma incident. It really means a lot. Sorry, we haven't actually recorded a podcast since before Irma, but I wasn't sure if I was going to have um, electricity mm -hmm. to upload my podcast, so I didn't record it. But it seems like a good time to record because there's another hurricane headed our way. <laughs> a couple. A couple of them, actually. Uh, there's Maria and Lee. So before any of them reach us, we thought it would be nice to get a podcast out to you guys to right. say... Maria okay. is up for this Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. between Wednesday and Thursday. So yeah, hopefully we'll get it up on Monday and uh, you can at least see us before all the weather starts going yeah, crazy because it's crazy crazy weather although we live in a solar powered house so unless the solar powers get blown away unless the then, sun yeah. goes away well we were we didn't what i meant was we didn't have uh problems with electricity yeah. during the storm or in the days after mm -hmm. um so um we're we were lucky, lucky in, in that, that way sense. because the eastern part of the island was the one that got majorly hit so they some places are still without power and running water. Puerto Rico has also been accepting refugees from all over the Caribbean islands because as you know, Irma hit as a category five hurricane. And for those of you who have never experienced a hurricane, in history, there have been a couple of category five hurricanes. Uh, the last one hit the island in 1928. That was the last time we got hit by a Category 5 hurricane. That was San Felipe. And 300 people died during that hurricane. Mm -hmm. It was another time in history yeah. in the sense that um, most of the people had uh, low-income built houses and um, basically any wood that they could find around. and or um, So they, weren't, they didn't have these uh, strong constructions. It was before everybody started constru constructing with... Um, cement and all that but um yeah um category five we <laughs> i don't you know some of us because uh, we're lucky that we didn't actually get to feel it because 185 mile an hour winds there's just no way to survive that honestly it's it's kind of like a monster to wipe out clean whatever it hits that yeah by the, the time way it goes by the time we went to bed um Irma had, was at least 70 miles from San Juan. I went to bed about maybe 12 o'clock and they already said that the worst had passed. For them. Uh, for, um, I don't know, I guess, and I can't imagine, but anyway, for the eastern part of the island. But at about 2 o'clock in the morning, there were these terrible wind gusts. We knew the wind would be coming later. 
But um, I hadn't sealed the house or anything because of the fact that they had said that it was already 70 miles away. But there were terrible wind gusts at that time in the morning. What happens is that we live in like a hole. Yeah. Our house Call is, it the hobbit it, hole. Right, is, hidden, is hidden behind uh, um, a huge... Well, not a huge mountain, but um, uh, there's a mountain hills. structure. There's right? hills, hills on both sides right, and that, behind mm-hmm. us. So the wind kind of like, unless the hurricane is literally passing over the western side of the island, we don't actually feel it inside this house. So we were very right. lucky I could, in that Outside, way. I could see the trees bending and I could them. hear the terrible wind. And uh, my husband woke up and he says, oh, I think some of those gusts are about 100 miles per hour. But it, wouldn't, it didn't sink into other hurricanes that would have gone by. They sink into this hole, and we, we were, even in the sealed house, it was just like they want to pull off your windows. But, um, yeah, so um, I guess so, we were lucky in that yeah. sense. But um, We just want to, again, thank you for all your concerns. And um, if we didn't reply right away, we were, you know, unsure of, how long the effects were going to last, if there was going to be sun the next day, because if there isn't sun, we don't get power because it's a solar powered house. So we were trying to save up our energy. And, but this has been a truly, truly horrible experience for many people, Mm -hmm. you know, Harvey and Irma and well, not only the hurricane, right? The aftermath Mm -hmm. of the hurricane or any of these, um, um, natural disasters, it's maybe even worse because you actually see the suffering, the lack of sustenance, the lack of water, the lack of clothes, people that have lost everything. So we would like to ask you if you are able to participate in any of the relief efforts that are going on right now. It's a worthy cause, I mean, in any sense, isn't and it? Honestly, any, anything you donate, whether it's clothes, food, or a dollar, it, it all sums up, you know, and if 7 billion people on the planet donate a dollar, those are 7 billion dollars they got collected for a worthy cause. Mm. And there are many different ways to donate. Um, I know the Red Cross has, um, has a website where you can donate money. And um, a lot of crafters are also donating money. I know Lolo did it. Um, she did a colorway specific for Texas. For Hurricane Harvey, that's already passed. But um, Caitlin from Goosey Fibers, Mm -hmm. she's dyed up a sock blank Mm -hmm. that 50% of the sales that she makes from that sock blank will go to the SPCA, the Houston SPCA, to help um, take care of all the animals that couldn't be taken into shelters during the hurricane. There's an issue. There's a big issue of a lot of families that have um, pets and they're not able to take them. They have to make decisions. They have to make choices mm-hmm. when they're trying to secure their family. So a lot of pets just get left behind. And, and this is her effort to help to help out with that. And she also and has a There's 20, a couple of them left. Yeah. No, uh, she dies them to okay. order. So I, I'm not sure. I think they'll be up until the end of September. But she does have a 20% off uh, discount all her in all her store. No coupon needed. Um, and, you know, for... Basically, you spend about what uh, twenty six dollars on the sock blank with the twenty percent off, and thirteen of those dollars will go to Houston to the SPCA. So, just find a find a cause that rings for you or one that you believe in, one that you think is going to maximize your efforts. Mm -hmm. But do something, do something, and and please help out. It's it's crazy, (laughs) right? So but as within all these natural disasters, the aftermath is just craziness for a while. Yeah. I am currently hosting a Cal in the Crochet Cakes Ravelry group, which you can find if you search for Crochet Cakes podcast in the groups tab on Ravelry. And it is for the Spotting Clouds top. Um, the Cal started on the 21st of August, and I am honestly thinking I'm going to run it until... The next time I record a podcast, will, which will be the 28th, the 28th of October, because that's going to be our Halloween special. Uh, Mom already has all picked out what she's going to be. I just, I have no idea what I'm going to be, uh, but I do know I want to be something epic, but I can't go as myself. <laughs> something epic that doesn't take a lot of crochet effort, huh? <laughs> 
<laughs> right. So,、um, in case you don't know, the spotting clouds top is a free pattern on. Well, you can find the link on Ravelry, but it can be found in Christina Hattering's blog, which is a spoonful of yarn. dot com. and dot com. And yeah, it's a free pattern. It's a garment. And very well written. There's lots of photos to help you along. It's about if you print it, it's about twenty one pages. So very well explained. And she was along with us at the beginning of、yeah. this of the Cal. I'm not so sure now,、um, but she went into our Ravelry group and she was、um, willing to accept some questions. And and I I so don't do what I did. I made the mistake of writing to her on Instagram, and then she she just wrote back recently that she didn't. Receive Instagram notifications of messages, so she wasn't able to see my message before. But then she answered、um, my doubt, and and she's been able to clarify the pattern through our、um, participation. Because I mean, there haven't been、uh, maybe、uh, just a tons of people, of,、yeah. but maybe ten or or eleven people that are doing the same pattern, or are extra eyes to find、um, any mistakes, or not necessarily mistakes, but. Um, maybe instructions that could have been phrased in a different way and made a little bit more clear. So I think we've been helping her out in that effort, and at the same and time, been, it helps her continue、yeah. to produce free patterns. And it's been a very active Ravelry group.、Mm. Lots of chatter, lots、We're、of small, people helping、active. each other, and lots of new people coming over、mm. and also crocheting the top.、Um, if you've never crocheted a garment,、um, please don't be afraid. I don't know. I guess I just kind of have that. Attitude where if people say, "Oh, you shouldn't start knitting with socks," I'm like, "Well, why not? I am going to knit socks, and you'll see. You can start knitting with socks." That's just the type of person I am. I like a challenge, but、um, this pattern hasn't really felt like a challenge. It's had a lot of basic stitches. Well, it's it's typical of her style. She likes to use a lot of simple stitches,、yeah. but in to produce. Um, something different. She likes to join them in different ways, and so、um, yes, do not be afraid of the um, the uh, skills that you need. They might be intermediate at some points in I, terms I, of the interpretation of the instructions. Maybe I would say if you've never worked with a crochet pattern, this might not be the way to start.、Um, but, but you just said the same thing about socks. Yeah. Well, that's so, true. Yeah. Well. So you know, if you want to do it, go do it. And, yeah. And we're there to help, and other people in the group are there to help. And mom's been more active and, than me,、uh, but, but we're、I'm、there.、Sure. Yes. I don't. I wouldn't consider it the most difficult of all the garments that I have made. Definitely not. It、um, can even get a little bit tedious, but、um, there are a lot of single,、uh, double crochets in there, half double crochets in there, chains. It's nothing extraordinary. So. And there's no fitting to it because it's supposed to be a loose garment, so you don't have to worry about that either. It's made to fit many sizes. So, yes,、um, please join us. We've got still another month to go, and so um, um, I think that would be enough time、yeah. to complete the garment. So if you're not taking any participation in all the other hundreds of cows that are going on, it's just too many. To here's another one、up. to, especially now in September, October. I feel that. Poof, it was just bombarded. Maybe it's that we're watching more podcasts now, or we're getting more information. I don't know, but I just felt all this is happening at once, and I don't know. It would be fun if we could double dip, right?、Um, if you could take make one garment and dip into many of the cows that well, are going on. I think there are、on. a couple of cows that you could do that, but、um, for example. The, well, pumpkin cow, okay. the pumpkin cow from、uh, Joanna, hosted by Joanna and Gabby from Once Upon a Corgi.、Whips? I'm not sure, but it started.、Probably. on... I think they would. It started on the 15th of September, and the back to school sweater cow starts on the 17th of September. Yeah, the only thing so, about the pumpkin is that it has to be pumpkin colorway related, right? Colorway related. So you can、or、do what I'm doing. I'm making a crochet jumper in orange, and I'm calling it my pumpkin pasties top. Because Harry Potter, so I can triple dip. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so, try and, and make your efforts count. So enough with the channel admin. It's time for. I was going to say one of my favorite segments of the podcast, but honestly, they're all my favorite segments. So I guess it's just time to show you what we're wearing. So what are you wearing? Oh, this is、uh, one of the top. Hmm. 
the cloth, the fabric that I used was linen fabric that I dyed using, what was this one? This was avocado skins, I believe. Yes. This was avocado skins. I'll stand up for a minute so you can see it. You should stand up actually. So they can, it's very, it's like a linen. Yes, it's a light linen. That was my mistake. Not the best for if you're going to do clothing with because it's pretty see-through, but um, it, it was what I had. It was what I had, and I had so much dye left in the pot after I finished uh, dyeing my yarn that I just wanted to use it. So I just stuck in a yard of linen, and um, and it painted through pretty well. It, it's there's um, it took on the color pretty well. I did more than it though. Um, experimentation. I mean, uh, what if it loses its color, I just dye it again and re-dye it. So I didn't more than it. But the um, yarn that's at the top is also yarn that was dyed using avocado stones. And so it, trying to cover up a little bit of the plainness. I only had a yard, so there wasn't a lot. I couldn't do something really fancy. So I just did a simple blouse and crocheted up the collar. Oh, but I really like how it looks. Mm -hmm. It's just didn't you think so guys it's just so fancy with the collar and the yarn is um high one of them highland wool and it's super wash high twist but it's um 75 25 um so it's got some nylon in it so mom mixed wool and linen and i just really like the i don't know i really like the look that the color gives that top you know this was a pattern that i found on internet um, it was in a blog, but the actual pattern was, I believe, I'll uh, put up the um, site because I did take note of it, but right now it's not coming to mind, um, where um, they actually put up the, the pattern, the picture of the pattern and the chart to, for making the pattern. So I think it was the first time that I crocheted something using 100% a chart. And um, um, because I was seeing the chart and because I did it, I know there was one one mistake where I got to a point where I just kind of lost track. And um, but I repeated it on both sides because I know I, I knew I had done it on the previous one. So you, re it's really just some change that it's it's missing down here. You wouldn't notice it. So because, if mistakes are but, consistent, um, they're just called a pattern. They're right. They're called a modification to the pattern. And so these are mo's, modified. <laughs> modified objects instead of just uh, um, finished objects and um, yes it's got I, I was debating whether or not to put at the bottom um, edging I don't think she didn't want me to I just but, like the simplicity but I, um, well, I think it's a very simple top and the collar on the edging when okay. I'm not here so what are you wearing what am I wearing I'm wearing clothes but no, I am wearing something that was gifted to me really, really generously. It was such a surprise too because I hadn't bought anything. And sometimes um, viewers ask for my address and I'm like, okay, here's my address. But it, it doesn't click that they want to send me something. It's just like, oh, okay, maybe they just want to send a postcard from where they live, which by the way, I love receiving postcards. So viewers from all over the world, if you want to just send a postcard from where you're from. I think it'd be very cool to just put them all up in, in the wall. I've always dreamed of doing that. Well, so. this particular viewer is from Sweden. Sweden, yes. And um, she does have an Etsy shop, but I'll get to that in a bit. Let me just stand up to give you a close. So one of the, oh, I could take it always, off. That's what you always tell me. <laughs> I could take it off. Um, so this is, can you guys see it's just a gorgeous necklace it's multimedia it combines these lovely wooden beads with um, these crochet that she crochets on top of the wooden beads so I just think it's lovely and I love multimedia projects um, and her shop I'll tell it to you in a bit later on in the show <laughs> when I talk about um, actual mail but I wanted to wear it today to just thank her so much so muchas gracias me encanta el collar y lo voy a usar mucho y yo sé que mami también me lo va a quitar so yes 
Thank you. Y saludos al niño. A la niña, a, la a tu niña. hija. Saludos a tu hija, a ti, a tu hija. Y muchos besos. They, they were learning Spanish. Oh, she knows Spanish. Um, she knows Spanish. She even wrote us a very nice note. I say us, but she wrote Clarissa a nice note in Spanish. But she also told Clarissa, shared with Clarissa the detail that her daughter had uh, not wanted to learn Spanish. And after seeing the podcast, she was then motivated. And so um, all the good things that come out of this sharing, it just can't get better, can it? So I found her little note. This is it. Can you guys read it? It's, yeah. She also included these lovely stitch markers. Who doesn't like unicorns? I'll show you the rest of it a bit later, okay? Um, but that just really moves us swiftly on to finished objects. Finished objects. Because we're wearing, well, mom's wearing a I'm finished wearing object. I'm wearing finished objects. And I've got a couple of finished objects. So, um, why don't you actually start with a... Uh, your finished object. Okay. I'll go later. So, um, I don't think that as many as other as other occasions because I've, you know, I've um, coming out too frequently. This is becoming a thing. It's supposed to be monthly, but since I haven't recorded it in three weeks. Do you think it should weeks. become a thing? Should it become a thing? Or maybe I need to start my own podcast and stop taking up Clarissa's space. But, well, mm. um, start off with... Um, Back to my jewelry, here is a necklace that was um, from the Ostentatious from the Crochet book. Mm -hmm. It uh, We got it off Amazon if you're interested. I know a couple of people have messaged me and told me that they, they also have, have this book. We all think alike. What is it that they say? Uh, great minds, uh, great think minds think alike. So it's from this book. Crafting minds think alike. That's what it should <laughs> also, be. and this is their version of the necklace. Well, that's so, the yeah. pattern. This is... <laughs> Mom's version. <laughs> That's my version, but this is the pattern, right? The one, the one that they put in the in the book, and so it's called Walt's necklace. Walt's necklace, and um, originally I had been choosing it to participate in Baron the I call them the Baron's the time bears, bakery but the, bears, the bakery bears, Austin, <laughs> Austin along that they're doing. Right, but um, um, most of uh, the finished objects in there are wonderful looking shawls and, and so I shied away I shied away from putting it in there I keep telling her she has uh, to brave it yeah well um, I don't know and the thing is that um, it hasn't been used yet it's uh mom made it for me because I told her I wanted to make it um, so she decided to take it upon herself and gift this to me as a surprise one day and I haven't worn it because I think it's so special it needs a special Outfit, so I think I'm saving it for Christmas, for Christmas Eve when it's when we do our big house party. That maybe I'm going to wear it with, um, hopefully, a what handmade this? skirt. This is um, Aunt Lydia's. This right? is Aunt, Aunt Lydia's, Lydia's yarn number three cotton. It's and um, bridal white, I think. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, it's bridal white, and um, Mom's added oh, pearls to let it. Let me see. What do they use as a hook? They use a three millimeter hook. I think you used a bigger hook, or yours? No, actually I didn't. I think I might have even gone, either I used the same one or I went down because the bubbles that it has here were not coming out very pronounced. And I was like, oh, but I want them like to stand out more. So I tried using a smaller hook so mm. that, I don't know if that makes sense that they would, <laughs> they would be tighter maybe. The gauge would be tighter and so that they would look better. But um, yeah, I love this. It's a simple, it's something that can be made in maybe if you have an hour. I think mom made it in like two hours. Like she made it really fast. Probably the most time consuming part was the pearls. Yeah, right? tying on the pearls. Because you did a wrapped loop for the mm -hmm. pearls. I love it. But I don't want to wear it just to go to work. I mean, no. Where else do we go? I wear everything to work. Well, I, I had diamonds, I'd wear them to work. Well, never mind. Um, so, one of the things that I want to show you as my finished object is something that should have been finished centuries ago. And it was for the Summer of Romance cow that I co-hosted with Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast. Now, if you've watched the podcast previously, you'll know I've been having some issues with my um, elbow joint and my shoulder. 
I haven't really been able to craft 100% like I used to. So this particular broomstick lace stitch was giving me a lot of trouble. So mom finished it for me. And the funny thing is that I'm a tighter crocheter than my mom, but my broomsticks are looser gauge than hers. And I just thought that was really hilarious because mom's the crochet the other way around. Yeah. And so I'm still weaving in some ends. In fact, I think the needle is stuck on them somewhere. I don't know. And if it isn't, I lost it. But, but it yeah. has been blocked. It's been blocked. And this was my Styx and Bethany shawl. And it's uh, the pattern is the Fog Break Shawl by Kat Golden. And it can be found in the Crochet Project 3 shawl book, which you can buy online or you can order as a print, I think. And the this contrasting green here is just little bean loves in her everyday sock base it was a hobbit gradient mini skein set that mom had and i kind of right, commandeered one greens in it because to bring out the greens and the main color of the shawl is uh, made by black elephant in her sticks colorway and it's 75 25 superwash merino nylon um i think it's great it's going to be a christmas present for somebody who is it for yeah me? <laughs> you want everything I you crochet. Know, you never have any surprises. It wasn't for you. Oh, no. That's a surprise. <laughs> you just want everything I crochet. That's so a surprise. It just technically uses 100 grams of yarn because you use five mini skeins and you block it aggressively to get it to stretch. And it really did block aggressively and it stretched. So I actually think it's the perfect size Still for just... Hot here. For just, ugh, it's boiling, guys. Like, seriously, everybody's talking about autumn, so we decided to bring out some of our autumn favorites. And I was gonna say this is my favorite shirt, which I wore to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, but everything I crochet is my favorite blouse or shirt, so. But I just love it. This was made using Catherine's yarn, which is, it was her original base, so it was 95, percent Romney Lambs wool, 5% Shetland, and it was the Autumn Leaves colorway. And this one back here is a shawl I made for Christmas for mom a year ago. That was for me. This one was, this is the Wigan Tree colorway um, by Little Bean Loves, who's Kayleen. Hi Kayleen. I can't go a single episode without mentioning some of Kayleen's yarn because it makes about 50% of my stash. Right. The other 50 being equally divided between Catherine's yarn and other dyers. <laughs> but yes, so that is my finished object. That's your first finished object. Yes, because I've got... I have a second one. Should I talk about my second one? Of course. Okay, my second finished object Do you want me was to show it for you? living in, in this bag, which was the first project bag that I ever made oh, for so cute i made it for um um the first exchange that i participated in and um what's fiber share no it wasn't fiber share it was actually run by knitting catherine on oh, instagram right, yeah. and um there were two people i don't remember the other podcast the other um, instagrammer but um this was my practice it was my practice bag i i, I practiced with this one so I, I could make another one and send it to um to my partner but I've always just loved it. And inside of there, I had I was using this yarn, which is well, what's it called here? Blue Army Girl. It's a superwash merino 7020, and um, it was also received through a, an exchange. This was fiber share exchange, and um, I made a sock. I made my what I call my <clears throat> Irma sock because in name of Irma, the hurricane, I sat down and I wanted something that I could just immediately start crocheting up. So I made the sock. I'm not too sure about that if I had thought about it, I would have actually chosen this yarn for this pattern because it's so highly variegated and this is a, a lace. It's a Can lace pattern see? running here along the leg. Um, I would have maybe not chosen this yarn but it was already caked up and it was easy to grab and so I just sat down and, and could immediately begin and we have um, 
and a version to crochet to caking yarn. Yes, it's, it's 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 the one of the worst things about getting started the caking. But this was by um, Ron Strong. Uh, Ron Strong. It's uh, from his book Stepping Into Crochet Socks. These are the Ralston socks, and I would really like to make them again. I would really like to try them out with a less variegated or maybe even a solid color because out of all the crochet socks I have made, these have fit the best. And they even fit um, Clarissa. A lot of the times when I make crochet socks, I have problems here and uh, in this, this part like from instep? here to here. This stretch, the this this measurement from there. Um, Ron Strong says that if you have those problems, that you should go up a um, hook size. Hook size, but it just hadn't been working for me. These. Or he says, or use a stretchier stitch, and so that I think was is the issue here. They fit so well because the lace here is very stretchy, so I have no problems getting them across over my foot, and neither does Clarissa. Um, so I like the sock a lot. I just don't obviously want all of my socks to have lace holes <laughs> because they, you know, if you put lace at the top, well, that makes them holy. <laughs> And though I don't have anything against holiness, every once in a while I think you want a sock, just like a simple solid sock. So I'm going to keep working at my socks, I trying to get that measurement right. I love these though. Um, they used a linked single crochet? At the bottom. At this, the which bottom? is very common in his socks. The, the, the bottom but it just part makes of the foot is very squishy. Mm -hmm. It's so squishy. I, I want them. I also like the cuff. Notice how this is one I did not knit. I the usually cuff. knit my cuffs. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the ones where I didn't knit. I just used the recommended stitch, which is front post, back post. And on the front, well, maybe it's because it actually doesn't have a cuff. Yeah, it's this just, is just like a, a leg. You finish off with the leg. He said you could add a cuff to it. But finishing off with the leg in this combination of stitches also gives you a, a nice fit leg. It's mm -hmm. not baggy. And um, so in general, I like the sock a lot. I also like all the different stitches that are in the sock because mm -hmm. these are just single crochets. These are linked single crochets. Then you've linked got half double. linked half double crochets. And then you've got this heel, which has a different texture to it. And then you go, I just... Love what that. happens with the keel is that it looks like a different texture. You are doing half linked double crochets, but since you're turning your work, this is going around. Mm -hmm. Since you're turning your work back and forth, you've got the front and the back of the half linked, um, uh, the linked half double crochet, and so it looks different. Well, that's why I want to do them in a solid color. I will try them again uh, in a solid color or at least less variegated. And um, yeah, so those are my Hurricane Irma socks. And I for just my next. Flew through them. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My god, that was the Trying worst to... pun ever. <laughs> I just, they just blew in. <laughs> you can cut that out. Okay. Speaking of socks, for my next finished object, I have managed to actually knit. Yes, I managed to knit. And I finally, finally, after many trials and tribulations, well, they were easy to make. It's just that I take a long time to not say anything vulgar <laughs> i take a long time to finish a pair of socks knit and these were if you've followed me for a while these were the socks that i had meant to gift mom for her birthday which was Yay, the 6th of birthday july socks. and it's now the 17th of september so yeah um, it wasn't the pattern's fault. The pattern was very easy to understand. These are the Mercury socks, which are a free pattern on Ravelry, and they were all the rage last year. And I can understand why. They were just so brilliant to make. I mean, I love the way the pattern made sense. It's a five pattern repeat lace. And these were the first ever lace socks I ever made. Um, Maybe I didn't choose the correct yarn because it's highly variegated, but they're called the Mercury socks. And this yarn reminded me of what Mercury looks like when we see it on camera. Mm -hmm. And um, the yarn, of course, is Harry Potter related. It's um, 
called Phoenix Fox Rising. The pattern, I mean, <laughs> the yarn is Fox Rising and it's the first ever a hank of yarn that I purchased from Kayleen. So it has a very special place in my heart and who better to have the socks than mom. Yay! Now I call these my Phoenix Tears Have Healing Powers and I am saving them for Christmas. She's gonna get them for Christmas. <laughs> Such Happy hard work. birthday! I didn't get a birthday present. Yes you did! I. I bought her a lot of stuff for her birthday. They are. I love knitted socks so much. I love the knitted socks. The only knitted socks I know are the ones that Clarissa has made, but they always turn out so lovely. And these socks are just gorgeous. They're just gorgeous. I just, I mean, these, the, the crochet socks can be comparable in terms of squishiness, prettiness, but they always turn out like booties instead of socks because the crochet fabric is so thick as compared to the to the knitted fabric now that looks so slim and tender and this one looks like it had too much to eat so uh, I love I love knitted socks so she's gonna get these on Christmas yay because after all the hard work I put into it <laughs> but I usually use my socks here because it's so warm to do exercise to run in but and so I'll save it for my Christmas run. I just want to show you something. It's so pretty. Really it would look so hilarious. pretty with a little dress and 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 clogs so, or something. So, um, oh. I actually counted rows, and if you can tell, this one. You know, if I make it fit, mm. it's taller than that one. I actually counted rows. That's why I prefer to measure mm. instead of count. Mm. Or you know what, doing a bit of both counting and measuring mm -hmm. because it just turned out taller. But the rest of it, it fits fine. And mom tried them on and they fit her, so yay. Well, I did mine not two at a time. You can't technically do them two at a time because uh, in crochet, but they were consecutively, which means that I worked on um, the toe, for both of them, then the leg for both of them, then the they still didn't turn out identical. <laughs> they still didn't turn out identical. One is thinner than the other. Um, but they're I didn't the same do, I didn't do the rows like she did. I did even I was counting rows, but I also measured maybe measured that's the way you have to go. At least to make sure that they were the same height. But in terms of width, they're a little bit wider than the other. So. I think gauge changes when you do things, when you get used to the stitch, when at the beginning you mm -hmm. might be really tight because um, it's a new stitch and it's a new make, but then as you get used to it. In my case, I also think it was that uh, these I knit using wooden circular needles and this I knit using metal circular needles. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I found my gauge to be tighter on the metal circular needles. And I think that's why one of them came up. But every time I see them, I, I want to knit socks. But I don't want to give in to knitting socks because mm. that's Clarissa's thing. So I keep crocheting socks and... and um, I want to crochet some socks though. I have the yarn picked out. and Because one of the things I did when I wasn't able to actually crochet much was that I looked through all my stash, I took out all my stash, cuddled all of it, and I assigned projects to each and every single skein of yarn. So every piece, hank of yarn or skein of yarn in my stash has a project assigned to it. Um, but there's just not enough hours in the day to actually do all that. It's just not so. enough time in your life, I think, if you're gonna do this, venture this for a long time. It's just like so many projects on my list, so many things to do and I don't, so little time, you know? And then. People keep producing more things, so the list changes, grows, and yeah. take things out and put things in, so, yes. So that is it for finished objects, so we can move swiftly on to what am I hooked on, because we are hooked on a couple of things, and I think you should go first, Mom. Okay, so continue with the fall and the, the autumn issue. You want to go to that first? It doesn't matter. Do you want this is just small. That's all I thought. Okay. Okay, then um, <laughs> I'm going to show my smaller object. Sitting in my Halloween bag that I didn't make, but I purchased because I found it beautiful. 
This is from the scrappy, uh, the scrappy thread. thread. And you see the fox that just, as soon as I saw the fox, I said, yes, I got to have it. The thing about it is in this project bag that I, my first Halloween project bag that's going to show up because I think I'm going to have, as usually, a couple of them, I have um, begun another sock. And this sock, I am preparing it in very special yarn. A very special yarn. This also is is something that might not uh, a purchase that might not happen again, just because it comes from so far away, and the shipping is really a little bit prohibitive. But this is, um, and also because yarn. our updates are just horrible. Oh uh, yes, this was just this is a uh, yarn from. Um, K from the bakery. K bears. from the bakery bears. Here it is. And one morning I woke up, and as I usually do when I wake up, I check my Instagram to see what's happened on the other side of the world during the night and just get me motivated to continue the day. And the first thing I see is a message from Kay saying that, oh, I just put a couple of uh, skeins on an update, an improvised update, so if you're interested, go by. And it said three minutes ago. And I said, what? And I immediately went into um, her site and I was able to purchase two um, skeins that we'll show you the one later. This one is Toil and Trouble. <laughs> and I just loved it. I loved the all the let me see if are you it's can yeah, you see it's coming up coming pretty out? true to color. It's yeah. The orange, the browns, and it's even some hot pinks in there. And oh, it's just, just screams. And it's you know, oh, and yeah. it's not even the colorway. Well, I love the colorway, but it's just I had never made anything or crocheted anything with this blend of yarn. It's 80%. Do we dare read it? <laughs> I'm not sure how it's pronounced, so I don't want it, to read it. Her base is called Middleum, I think, but it's an 80% superwash uh, BFL and 20% high nylon. It's a high twist yarn. Now, as mom oh, said... Oh, that might be it. Maybe it's the high twist, I, but this is divine. Working with this is just divine. This is again another sock from, it's a lace, the lace sock from uh, Ron, Strong. Ron Strong's book. And so I've got my toe and in the front it's got like a cabled lace and that's going to go on all the way up to the leg. So these are my Halloween socks, starting early on my Halloween stars, socks to make sure that um, they get done in time. So I just love how it's working up because it's a variegated yarn, but it's a very, I find it to be a very subtle variegation because all the colors are kind of in the same family. And as mom says, I love working with a, a BFL nylon base. I think it's, um, the first time I ever worked on it was for my goth day socks because, goth day cake socks, because it's a uh, um, yarn that Kristen from Vullenvine also, it's a base she carries as well. So those are my next socks. Um, what um, I actually have no socks cast on, but I should start casting them on if it's gonna take me three months to finish because Christmas socks, guys. Well, unless you do Christmas crochet socks. socks. Um, I was gonna do Rose City Rollers because I find that Rose City ro Rollers give you a pair of socks, but you could actually get two pairs of socks from it if you do contrasting heels. So from one skein of yarn, you might get two pairs of socks. Let's see. But what, um, excuse me. What I'm working on is actually something that you guys haven't seen yet. It's uh, a cowl that's going on. It's the hashtag cake cowl, hosted by Emma from Potter and Bloom. And I am making, hooking, mm -hmm. Uh, the Lyula and it's a stole. I won't show you the paid for pattern. Yeah, it's a paid for but pattern. But she did give a discount? She gave she, a discount. Yeah, she gave a 50% off discount, which you can find if you go to her blog, which is where she puts the show notes for each and every episode. And um, I'm trying to just, it's, it's black and white. But you can tell that's it's supposed idea. to be, that's the idea. It's supposed to be a leaf pattern. Very now, lacy. I didn't want to purchase new yarn for this because we've got so much stuff. And we had already purchased the cake for um, the, the spotting, spotting clouds. clouds top. 
So what I did was I commandeered some yarn from Mom's stash because she had um, five 25 gram mini skeins. And da, 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 this is what it's working up right now. Um, I did color changes. This is Art Yarns, right? And it's a non super wash light fingering weight yarn. They classify it as a light sport weight, but it's really not. I mean, look it's at that. Ply. It's a three, uh, yeah, it's two ply. It's not a well, light. Well, I say it's two, she says it's three, but. Well, it's, it's got three plies. Two is what, two is what the package but says. But two plies is a weight, yeah. So this is non super wash, and as everybody keeps saying, this is kind of like something that you go, oh, let me finish this leaf. But when you finish the leaf, you're halfway through another leaf. So let me finish that one, and let me finish that one, and let me finish it. And it just keeps the ball rolling. And honestly, I feel that for the little amount of time I've dedicated to this, I have made a good um, dent in it. And what I love about it is that it's non super wash. What that means is that I can felt my ends. Yes. Yes, it does. So that means uh, I'm just going to show you the first time. This is the first time I've ever felt it a join. You can see it's a bit rough around the edges, but hey, I don't have to weave them in later. <laughs> and I would have significantly more ends to weave in than anybody else because um, changing colors. I'm changing colors. But if you do a cake, then you just have two ends. So to what weave is in. it? What does it involve when you felt your ends? Um, when you felt the join, um, I just followed a tutorial on the lionbrand.com blog and it was super easy. What she said was that you had to separate your plies into groups. So if your yarn has four plies, then you do two groups of two plies um, for the yarn that you've got left and the yarn you want to join. Once you've separated those plies, you wet your yarn and she says anything will do you can spritz water you can use water you can use your saliva anything that makes the yarn yeah that's what she said anything that makes the yarn wet is acceptable so then i just um let me do a bit of demonstration here yeah so let's say i wanted to join this color could you hold that this color to this color so once I've established, I left about four inches, then I will just kind of like put it like this. Can you guys see that? And just since you've wet, you've separated your plies and you've wet it, you just start rubbing it together between your hands and the friction of that actually causes it to felt. I'm actually called fulling, but okay. Okay, fulling because it's yarn. <laughs> Technical term, fulling. Okay, um, but. so this is um, gradient of greens. Mm -hmm. So you've got the next one is a darker, more yeah, intense greenish see. blue. Is it no? Yeah, um, yeah. Then the last one is like no, a like really a emerald, emerald green. Emerald green. Oh, okay, an emerald green. So yeah, and, well, um, interesting to see how that's going to turn out. Yeah, I think it's going to look great um could you hold these so i can mm -hmm. hold all of them together so um this is the color transition yeah these are the ones um this is the mint i used it completely this is this one it's a darker mint and then this aqua kind of green but i thought you said there were five transitions one two three four five oh, okay There's this two is the here. one that's finishing yeah, yeah. this is the next one then. yeah so and it goes then, like that. Okay. Yep. So it goes like that. I think it's gonna look great. This is my favorite color of the transition. I don't know, I think I like them all. I think it's going to work out really pretty. So essentially, I'm doing my own cakes of yarn. And these actually are not such a hassle because they don't, at least knock on wood, they haven't tied themselves up into a frenzy. So they make like 10 minutes, maybe less, to cake up. So I have them. And I'm using the recommended hook size, which is a four millimeter. I could have probably gone up one more, because um, really? remember- You didn't think you would lose your stitch definition? Yes, but remember the- um, Hotel of Bees. Yes, I used a five millimeter hook. But I always thought it was- It was a bit too- You lose stitch definition when you, your hook size is too big for your thread. But it would have been it very- It all depends on what you want. It would have been very breezy as well, because- um, 
the this yarn is fingering weight and it mm. also used a five millimeter hook so I don't think I lost stitch definition there so I think it's gonna be great so what uh, what else are we working on? What else are you hooked on? Well, this is the first time that we're actually working on the same thing at the same time. And it is oh. our... Spotting, spotting Clouds Top. 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 <laughs> top. <laughs> Which, as we mentioned previously, is the cow uh, I'm hosting over in the Ravelry group. So why don't so you show your... <laughs> do yours first. But <laughs> yours is... is Near go, oh, yours is the beginning. All right, let's go back. Right, so I've just been working on it a little bit here and there, and I actually got gauge with uh, the hooks that Christina recommended, which were the the three millimeter hook and the three point five millimeter hook. We're both using clover; it's our favorite hook um, to use. So. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm at. So I've used Aunt Lydia's just mm -hmm. cotton thread, number three cotton thread for the top, uh, which is this area. This is the back side, because, no, is it the back side? Because they're going down? Yes. Okay, so that's the front side, they're going up. And since it's a free pattern, you know, the first thing you do is essentially work on this shell panel, and then once you've worked on the shell panel, you start working your way kind of like to the back or to the front, depending on how you look at it. And the yoke is in uh, cotton. Yeah, the yoke is done in, I want to see your face, <laughs> in 100% cotton, mercerized cotton. This is Aunt Lydia's. We used mercerized, she uses She cat used katona. Katona. She used katona. Um, so, yeah. And now, um, I think I'm finishing my sleeves now. Let's see if they can see the color and change here. Yeah, this is bridal white, which honestly, I don't understand why they call it bridal white because it looks more like ivory. So why don't you just call it ivory? But yeah, so then I started the whirl because um, the pattern... You have the first she, two colors of yeah, the whirl, right? She designs it using Sheep G's whirl, which is a 50-50 cotton acrylic blend. No, 60 percent no, cotton, forty percent acrylic, two hundred and fifteen to two hundred and twenty-five grams, which equals one thousand meters. It's a one hundred gram. This is one hundred. I mean, no, sorry. In one hundred grams, you've got approximately four hundred and fifty-five meters. So um, it's fingering. It's light. Um, I think I agree with Christina. She called it fingering or a light fingering. Um, I also agree because this one is fingering and it is a bit thicker than this one. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> so, um, but I'm using the color Blueberry Bum Bum because you can see the colors here. Hope you can read that. Turn it so I can see the and this changes. is the transitions. I'm working towards the gray now and then it'll be light blue and like a denim and then the navy. Mom and I are hoping to get tunics instead of just the shirts but well not so much as hoping she says that if you use the entire cake mm -hmm. you can do a tunic but i don't know how long i can go on <laughs> i don't know either honestly um the single crochets are getting on my last nerve right now and there but... aren't really that many if you think they're in groups of four rows mm -hmm. but um but I understand the construction, like she wanted to make a sturdier yoke, so she used 100% cotton. And this is very flowy and soft and absolutely gorgeous to crochet with. Like, how are you finding? Have you gone, uh, well, I mine, my particular cake, has a lot of entanglements. As um, you work out towards the sides, there's a lot of... Um, Tangles. Bulks of yarn that are I tangled thought. together. And I found a lot of places where you can see how one uh, a piece of yarn was joined to another and it's it's like it's not it looks almost like your felted join where it's really furry and thick I've compared got, to the other. I've got one of those. Oh, I got a lot of them. But so I can't far. find it now. So I guess that's a good thing. I do have a couple of those fuzzy. Yeah. Um, I considered cutting and joining and then oh, no. I just that, that should, that's what is it defeats the whole purpose of yeah. using a whirl that your yarn is changing colors but without you having to in color the yarn the crochet <laughs> in the changes sorry but in terms of texture i'm loving the texture this yarn is producing yeah it's nice and soft and um and i think it's 
I could even make pajamas out of this, which I really Are want Are you using to. the 3.5 or the 3? Um, oh, good question. So, Mum, why don't you show yours for comparison and we can talk about it a bit. Um, I don't want to because your <laughs> stitch definition is so pretty. I don't want to show mine. That's why I asked you because yours is so tight. So, I used a 3 where she calls for a 3 and a 3.5 where she says to use the 3.5 except on the sleeves. Uh, I looked at mom's sleeves and I thought they were just ginormous for me. And I have a thing about it, like, this is a cap sleeve. I don't like cap sleeves, but I like the shirt, so, you know, I wear it. Because I hate the fact that people can literally see, see your, your underarm. underarm. So, why put a cap sleeve if they're going to see my underarm anyway? Might as well make it sleeveless and make it breezier. It's my philosophy. So, um, but I also have a thing where I hate it when sleeves are wider than my arm. <laughs> so, yeah. And because I looked at mom's sleeves and her sleeves were a lot wider. Let me, like, let me show it then. Mm, mm, mm. I don't want my sleeves to be that wide. Since she's insulting my top, I'm going to bring it out so you can see it. It's not an insult. It's just a, a different... Okay, this is my... Love it. Isn't it... Gorgeous. This is my up to now. Oh. Let's see. I've it. been able to work on it a little bit more than Clarissa has, obviously, because isn't it amazing? Let's see. Oh, but I here are the it. sleeves that she is insulting. I'm not insulting them. I'm just comparing. But it's just my stitch definition is really so that's put up yours on the other side. And that like that? Let's see if you can get that side and I'll get this side. Oh, the other side? I get it, I get it, I get it. So, um, this is my sleeve and that's mom's sleeve. Honestly, I don't think mine looks that much smaller. Yes, it does. Look <laughs> where mine goes. <laughs> well, what I did... That's why I asked you if you were using a smaller... Let me compare this way. What I did was that I used the 3mm hook for the sleeve, but I'm still increasing the same way she said to increase and everything else so um i decided that i was going to do all the increases she said even though i find that it's going to be a big big for my non-existent titty committee you know so um well i i was even worse than than clarissa i talk about her but i was even worse because i do not like i don't know if actually i probably do like um, loose fitting clothes. You do wear But loose since I'm so clothes. thin, people are always staring at me like saying, oh God, you know, my husband wants me to put a tie around the waist because the, the what I'm wearing looks too big or, or too loose. And so um, I decided to play um, pattern, guard. pattern designer here <laughs> and, and modify a perfectly good pattern. But what I did was that she kind of I, brought it in. I can yes. tell when you brought it, where you yeah, brought you it in. Yeah, you can tell that over here, where well, we began the, the um, double crochets, over here in the double crochets, I anytime there was a double crochet, I decreased. How, uh, what I did decreased you decrease? a lot. Every five stitches, I decreased <gasps> one. Wow. But then what happens was that when we got here to the shell part, this shell part that's here, I kind of found that it decreased on its own. See, it's pulling it in. That's not me decreasing anything here. That is the structure of the shell. Since it hasn't been blocked yet, they're kind of pulling the garment in a bit there. And so what happens now, I'm a little bit more advanced. As a matter of fact, I'm almost at the end of um, the um, repeats that I'm Justina just put in her top. She said her top had two repeats of this section here this section here which has no it's from here the kind of lacy bits and then some single crochets oh, well, the think, shell pattern and then again some single crochets all of this is a repeat i think i crochet so she repeats that twice and then finishes it i think i crochet tighter than you not horizontal but vertically because yes vertically because i'm almost done with the single crochets and it's supposed to cover your cleavage well, area what you don't have so you're just fine <laughs> yeah but i'm still gonna wear a bra yeah but what i mean is that mine doesn't cover it either look 
Yeah, but hers did. Hers she does. must have a looser definition yes, than you. Yes, she does. Because I'm going to be like you. Because mine is, is, is a lot higher. So, uh, but I like it. I've tried it on and I like the way it looks. Um, what I'm just considering now is whether once I have finished here this section, this section of repeats here, this pattern repeat, which will be go down, maybe this much more. Do I want to continue until I finish up my my whirl? Here's my color. Here's my sheep cheese whirl. This one is a slice of cherry. And so I have used up on the inside, it had a gray and then a very light pink. And now I'm onto this like raspberry pink that's here. Yeah. Which and is this one? It gets darker on the edge, and finally this here. And I wouldn't get in any of these last two colors, I don't think. If I stop. Unless stop, I no. continue it. Oh, I think you so, should. So, I don't know. Here's the sleeve issue that Clarissa says that mine is really, because it kind of like hangs down. You already showed it. And so I am considering if I'm going to put an edging on that to bring it down more to kind of cover up the, the um, underarms there. And so, I don't know where I'm going with this yet. Uh, well, I'll I see. would like to make the tunic as well, but I am a very impatient being. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't enjoy the process of creating my garment. I just want to wear it. I want to get it done. I want to see it on mm -hmm. me. So, But then again, I think if I just leave those little bits of colors left, what am I going to do with it? Yeah, you should just keep going. But it all depends. We'll keep see. Hooking we'll see. We'll, I'll keep hooking until we reach close to the date of the end of keep the cow. Keep calm and hook and we'll on. See. We'll see where it goes. Keep calm and hook on. <laughs> okay. All right, now that I say hook on, it is time to talk about hook it. What are we planning on getting hooked on? <laughs> yeah, that's what the segment hooking it, hook it is about. So what we're planning on hooking. Now I've got technically two garments on the go. One of them is the one I was attempting to make with the lace weight yarn, which I still really love, but Working with such thin yarn right now is not really possible. So I have it on pause at the moment. I will finish it because I love that yarn and I'm really loving the um, the way it's working up. I've got that spotting clouds, but as I mentioned previously, I want to make everything. everything. <laughs> oh, got confused. What are your um, immediate plans? My immediate plans are crochet domination. Oh, if I can get to it. Okay, crochet related plans, sorry, uh, involve this yarn, which is a 50-50 cotton polyester blend, Egyptian cotton polyester blend. Uh, that's the brand, Tenna, and the color is 402. Very creative. But I call it my pumpkin orange. And this shiny bits that you've got are the That's polyester. That's what I don't like about that yarn. It's, it's very not applied. No, it's very splitty, but I do like the texture it produces. It's a very, produces a soft fabric, and I shall be using it to make the riverette top, which can be found in Pom Pom Quarterly. I don't remember the issue number, but it's the one where it's all beige. I think it was the spring. I think it was spring 2016. I know Emma has already made this top and she made it in mustard. So, Faye uh, from yeah. The and then Faye Circle from podcast. the Crochet Circle podcast also made it. She made it in a blue and a brown. And I loved the pattern, so of course I had to go purchase it. Now, when you purchase it from Ravelry, it's about eight pounds, I believe, and you get the entire ebook. So you get the entire issue of the Pom Pom Quarterly magazine. Or you could purchase it I from- I think it has two, what does it have? Two crochet patterns, they say? It's got it? two crochet patterns, which is, I hear the most that they've ever put in a magazine. So that's why I purchased it. But you could also purchase it directly from the Pom Pom Quarterly website. And as I said, this is pumpkin. There's a pumpkin cow going on. There's a sweater cow going on, too, but I'm naming it my pumpkin pasties top because pumpkin pasties are a sweet from Harry Potter that you could get from the trolley in the Hogwarts Express. And I think they would look this magical. So we can enter it into the um, 
So we can enter it into the Harry Potter Cal. Inside tw- Inside number 23 Cal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Harry Potter Cal hosted by KT from Inside number 23. Yay! So, three cows. Um, are you planning on hooking anything? Yes, but I wouldn't have um, anything with me right now because the plan is all up here. But um, um, we'll insert, I'll ask Clusa to insert a picture of the finished object because it is a, um, I don't know if it's on Ravelry. I don't think so. It? Because it's a, the, um, there is one on Ravelry, but not the one that I chose to do because I chose a free one, which has a video that accompanies it. It is... The Maleficent headpiece. Our uh, Halloween um, special is coming along, and if I don't start early, I won't get anything done. And so this year, I'm going with full-blown Maleficent. If you what I'm planning to make then is the headpiece of um, Maleficent, and um, so oh, I can recycle some of the things that that we were using oh. yesterday. But there is a free video for making the headpiece on YouTube. I still don't know how well put it is and how, um, because I haven't tried it yet, but I will let you know. So I have purchased the yarn to make that headpiece and um, that will be, there are no Halloween cows going on that I know of, but um, maybe we should start It'll be for a Halloween special then. I don't know if I could, let's face it, if I start another cow, because I'm planning on starting the Christmas cow, because as a crafter, you're already crafting for Christmas gifts, aren't you? So, yeah. But before we move on from Hook It, there is something that I want to show you guys because I am hooking it with a fourth purpose. So not only do I want to enter the river at top into three cows, I also want to make it as part of my actual Halloween day outfit. And for that, I needed to sew up a skirt. And look, guys. <laughs> so this is a fabric that I purchased from Open Frame on Etsy. I purchased two yards of this fabric and she gave me free shipping on it and after I had purchased it I kept looking at it I was like why does it seem similar because Katie from Inside Number 23 did a robe blue dress in this fabric. Um, so right now I'm missing to insert the zip. Oh yeah, look at that pattern matching. Incredible. Yeah, I'm missing to Not just... Not even on purpose. Yeah, that wasn't on purpose. I tried, but you know. And I'm just missing to finish the waistband, insert the zip and do up my hem. So I'm hoping to be able to finish it next week at some point. And who knows, we might get another hurricane. So if we've got light, that'll be conducive to actually finishing sewing. So I'm very happy because I think this will make a gorgeous, I mean, you can't get more Halloween than no, that. No, no, you can't see Halloween with any other colors. No. So Great, that is very cute. I know, I love it. <laughs> is that the only fa- Halloween fabric that you bought? Uh, no, uh, it is not. So I guess we can move on to acquisitions because I do have a couple of tiny bits of things. Yeah, it's a little part of your sewing. Um, the dress? No, I forgot. So, the other Halloween fabric that I purchased is this. <laughs> Isn't it great? Um, this one is from Cotton and Steel. No, it's not. Sir, what? I thought it was Cotton and Steel. I guess not. I thought it was. Maybe I was looking at another one that was Cotton and Steel. So, this is Sarah Watts, her Boo um, Halloween fabric. It's from 2016. And I bought. I bought that this because it, does, it didn't say Freaky Halloween to me, it just said... It didn't say Freaky Halloween when you saw it online. I still don't think it says Freaky oh, Halloween because okay. cool. the colors are very subtle and they're very girly so I'm hoping to make a dress also to wear during the Halloween season but that, well, that might be a challenge, that's all I'm saying. Well, you could do Halloween all year long like that. That's true. Other people we know. I would probably wear it. I mean, I love it. Oh, and I forgot to mention the oh, skirt the pattern, pattern is right there. It's very simple, actually. I had made a pattern like this before for Clarissa, and 
I ended up making it too small. Yeah, because so she squeezed into it, but if you actually you have to look at the pattern measurements, I'm a size 10 in this pattern. So that's what I cut up and it's actually going to fit yeah, perfectly. I think it's so. going to fit well. Yeah, so that's Halloween fabrics. Oh wait, no. I also purchased from this um, Spindle and Rose on Etsy and she packaged the most beautiful package. Like the tissue was hand stamped and everything. So I purchased this fabric to make a Halloween bag for mom. It's um, got my three children there dressed up for Halloween. See, this one's cotton and steel. And I think it's called the Ophelia fabric. I love it. Isn't it just, wouldn't it make a gorgeous skirt or dress or whatever? And she also included this little gift, which I think you could make in a project bag, just adding a piece of fabric at the bottom. So that was very, very kind of her. And I- Unfortunately, they're all girls, so. But my son is dressed up as a girl for this one. And yeah. Which he would do. So very pretty. Those are all my fabric very vintage acquisitions. Very vintage Halloween. I love it. Those are all my fabric acquisitions, but they've all got projects attached to them. So I didn't just buy because I thought they were pretty. If not, I would have purchased like two hundred dollars <laughs> worth of fabric because it was tough deciding. But um, do you have any acquisitions, or should I keep moving <laughs> on? Um, you can continue because yeah. I didn't bring my acquisitions, it's fine. Oh, so this is something that I acquired. Sorry for the crinkling, I forgot to take it out. So Catherine came out with a new colorway and a new sock base. Like this is a sock base. It's a nylon blend. And this is uh, her Polworth and nylon blend, which I've never tried Polworth, so of course I had to purchase it because it's Polworth. And I love the light speckling. I think it'll make a gorgeous, gorgeous it is sock. It's soft. It's really oh, soft. It smells so good. And the other thing that I purchased. Is this one that I bought magic, something about magic? No, this one's called Pixie Dust. No, but is it the same? Did I buy the same blend from her? No, was mine was the no yours was lace weight. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, Opera Joe showed um, the package she received from Catherine from Craft and Treats. And it was the San Francisco mm -hmm. Opera. Yeah. So it's called Night at the Opera. And yeah, it's in her South Atlantic fingering base. So this is the 100% non-superwash. Uh, British Falkland Merino and it's I can't decide which one I like more honestly um, oh I also forgot to mention this is since it's a sock yarn it is super washed so I think when you do the super wash treatment um, it actually kind of softens the yarn in a way I I think it also makes gives it like a little plasticky coating but the other thing um, not only did Catherine include some extra minis in here, um, but she gave me the most amazing gift as well. She gave, gifted this gorgeous, gorgeous Halloween stitch marker bracelet. Um, she's been selling some of them in the shop, but I think she's gonna pull them out for Yarndale because she will have them at Yarndale. So it's a sterling silver coated bracelet that you could just hang all your stitch markers from it and i know the purpose is to use the stitch markers but i'm just wearing it as a charm <laughs> bracelet i was seriously wearing it everywhere as a charm bracelet if i love charms and this just reminds me of a time in my life when mom used to make a charm bracelet for me all the time so mm -hmm. i'm not really using them as stitch markers <laughs> so I think that is it for acquisitions from me. Let's move on. No, I just wanted to show I've got the, the... I've got one more, but I'll show it after because it kind of has to do with mom's theme. Well, what happened to this? It came out. I don't know. I'll tie it for you. I just wanted to show the other hank that I was able to get from the bakery bearers, which was this 
Something Wicked This Way Comes. And I just had to have that one. I don't remember if this one or the, I think this was the first one I put into my car. And so I bought it and then I went back and I said, boy, people still haven't gotten up. So I went oh, back and I, I did, went and I bought a second one, which was the Toil and Trouble. Toil and and um, this one is just gorgeous too. Well, I don't know what it's going to be, but I, I like the Toil I and love Trouble. It. More. I love the I love the feel of it. Yeah, because you don't like purple. I also made two purchases from Nora George, which was also a first for me. Um, this one because it's called pumpkin. I love pumpkin. And I wanted to participate in participate the in the pumpkin cows that are going on. So I got the pumpkin. I bought three hanks of this, which 300 uh, grams, which will hopefully be enough to also make a cardigan you for my make... participation in the back to school yeah. um, sweater. And the pumpkin cow. And the pumpkin from Joanna. Joanna. And I can't remember if anybody else is doing. But anybody else doing something pumpkin-y, this is going to be my entry. And that's also BFL sock. Oh yes, and I'm just loving it. But, but I like the feel of K's This is 75-25, And this why. is 80-20, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I think I like the 80-20 BFL sock more than the 75-25. I, oh, I needed that smell to give me my, my motivation and my strength. Oh my god, that's oh something, goodness. guys. Like. So did you do it? Oh, I don't know. It did it to itself. And the you bought the other one that I purchased was I bought it because of the name. What's the fire is so delightful. If mm -hmm. you got nowhere to go, mm -hmm. let, let it snow, snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. But do, 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 I bought do, it as my do, Christmas do, 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 yarn purchase. Do, 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 that after I bought do, it. it Really didn't look that Christmassy to it looks me. Looks to me like Valentine's so, Day, honestly. <laughs> it really didn't look that Christmassy, so I don't know. Maybe if we pair it with like green, we need to buy a green one. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. But well, I bought it because it, of the name, and I do that a lot. I buy things because of the name. It's just I did too. the way I roll. So um, yeah, I've got one more a nice acquisition. Crocheting coming up. Let's see. Which other. will be used for very nice crocheting. And it's so exciting. But first, I'll show you. the last one. No, <laughs> then I've got a, a gift. packages coming in. Well, one of them is a gift. And this I purchased it a long time ago, but it takes four weeks for her to fulfill your order. So, you know, purchased it a month ago. I got a free gift. You can tell what this is going to be, right? You can, you yeah, can tell. We're all seeing where this is heading. It's from Harper Baby Shop. I love her ergonomic hooks. And it comes in a lovely little home, all Harry... <laughs> if you're not going to use that, I can find a ah. use for that. Ooh, there we go. The... I should have known that you would be here, Professor McGonagall. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, I bought McGonagall. You can Very hold cute. on to her. Very cute. Um, and Except she's missing a nose and a mouth. Oh, she never does nose or mouths on it, on any of her hooks, but I love her Harry Potter hooks. And uh, the other thing that I want to discuss is the gift I had received. So not only was Catherine kind enough to send me this gift in order, but Yael, who I know on Instagram, we've chatted for a bit, she kindly sent me not only the necklace I was wearing, but this gorgeous you are wearing. that I'm wearing <laughs> currently. But this gorgeous project bag with yarns and knitting needles and little sleeping cats and ugh, it's so well made. It's like canvas. And mm, very nice size too. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. could probably fit a shawl in here. Oh, definitely. I think I could fit a garment in there. Because mm -hmm. I'm tiny, tiny. so mm -hmm. garments would fit. And she also sent uh, some washi tape and some really gorgeous buttons that I think, yeah, that's the her information right there. So I'm just gonna put all that in the bag. You can head on over to her Etsy shop to, if you feel fancy, purchasing, blah, 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 purchasing a bag for yourself, then head on over. And there's just, I really love the quality of the materials she used for the bag. So no, it was so pretty, it's a pretty thought. I mean, who expects to receive something like that in the mail? I didn't. And she, funny, funny thing, she asked for my address and I was like, oh, okay, maybe she wants to send me a card or, you know, like I said, and then I get this package and I was like, mom, look, 
Um, so yes, thank you so much, Ayla. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you to everybody who just supports this podcast. But before we head out and go our merry own way, we would like to talk about what's on our YouTube TV. And specifically, we want to talk about two, uh, well, three new to us podcasts. You go first. Okay, I don't, I can't really remember if I already mentioned this on the last No, podcast. you didn't. Okay, um, the last episode of Crochet Luna, her podcast, she mentioned, she, it was like a, a tribute to male crocheters, and so she mentioned a couple of podcasts that were run by males, and I got, I've gotten into watching one of them, um, which is the um, Hand Me Down Knits, Hand Me Down Knits, and it's Gerard. Gerard, yes, his name um, is Gerard. He's several names. He mentioned several names. That's the one that I remember. And so I started with the latest one and have uh, every once in a while I'll go back when I run out of current podcasts. And um, it has been very delightful. It's um, it's a, a he just sits in, in his corner, in his crochet corner, and he chats. It's very informal. And um, he's very knowledgeable, so he shares a lot of... Um, knowledge of history and and other things he used as to be he, a monk as he does his podcast and um and, and he's very um very much like Catherine very in, thorough very thorough and um very calm and, and really talks about um the the things that he likes and it's like he says goes off on a tangent every once in a while but i like those tangents i'm a math professor by profession so tangents are are my call and yeah since i watch the podcast as i crochet at night uh, i'm usually crocheting between the hours i'm um, let's say maybe eight to twelve for sure from eight to twelve if i have no schoolwork, i'll be crocheting i'm usually sleeping and in so the hours for me <laughs> takes a couple of podcasts to fill up all four hours and so yes if you have a chance go over and stop by and uh, take a look at his podcast and i'm sure you'll find it as entertaining as i've been finding it so what have you been watching i've been catching up with all my old podcasts because i haven't i usually watch podcasts more when i'm at work because i put them on put my headphones on and it helps me be entertained while i'm doing very some very mundane activities not that my job is mundane but every job has mundane things that we'd rather not be doing doesn't it by mundane you mean boring yes okay. boring right. and um so that's when i usually watch podcasts so i've been catching up with them and i've um been watching two that are new to me and one of them is the Addie Day Designs. She's um, Deanne from Addie Day Designs. She has a podcast and it's so lovely to watch because for some reason most of the podcasters that we tend to watch are British. I don't know why. But they always pop up and so it was really nice finding she's a podcast. Australian. She's Australian. So you get to see about yarns from Australia and pattern designers from Australia. So I really love her podcast because she's from a different part of the world. But because being a crochet designer, she also puts a lot of content and you can see what she's working on. And she's just so friendly and and chatty mm -hmm. and um, very knowledgeable of the art. And skillful. And she's yeah, she amazing. always does crochet brioche, which I find intimidating, but she has a couple of patterns out for that as well. And she just talks to you about her crocheting experience. And she does so many different things that I just love watching. There's a lot of podcasts. crocheting for her daughters. Yeah. And, and she's always, always so happy about the things that she makes and presents to you. So, yeah. And the other one that I've been recently watching is the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. And mm. she is Starry Eye Sally on Instagram. She's Ali. Her she's name. Ali. Mm -hmm. She crochets and she knits. So, you can always find something to do in her podcast. And... I don't know, I'm just really enjoying discovering all these new podcasts and of course I'm going to go pop over and visit Gerard at some point and Melody Crochets is still on my list. She's also a new to me podcast and she has a couple of episodes, wonderful episodes out as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just spread the love guys. We need to spread as much love as we can. And share, share what we're doing mm -hmm. and share what other people are doing and um, it's all good. It's just... 
a good way to spend a little bit of extra time that you've got and not feel lonely and feel that there's somebody out there that likes this craziness as much as you do. Yep. So with that wonderful thought, we shall take our leave. We shall depart. We shall see you when we can. <laughs> Um, I'll keep you guys posted on Instagram if uh, the hurricane does come our way and I'll be warning you guys that uh, we might be incommunicado for at least uh, three days if that hurricane does come. So, yeah. Thank you for us. watching. Thank you for joining us. Yes. There's a lot to choose from out there. So if you could take this little bit of time to be with us well we are Thank very you. thankful and if you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and, and don't forget you, to subscribe we are approaching we're doing our our oh, goal of guys. approaching a thousand viewers we're still a bit away we're at 905 when i went to bed last night hey, when i first uploaded this podcast i was like oh my god only mom's gonna watch me <laughs> <laughs> right so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So from us, but there are a couple more than me watching you, Cloudy. Couple so, more. <laughs> thanks for viewing Thank us you. and happy crafting. Happy crafting. Bye. Bye. Take care. Terribly well made bag. It's terrible. I mean, it's just gorgeous. She is a terribly well made. <laughs> Can you say that?